Welcome back. I am now joined by Philip Newman. He is Managing Director at Metal Focus and Michael Rienzo is Silver Institute's Executive Director. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and what a start to this year when you look at gold prices. So Philip, the first question really is to you. So while we are trading at an eight-month highs in the international markets, India has been making all-time highs for last four or five sessions, including today as well. How do you look at the currency play and what's your sense on where the gold prices are headed? Well, I think you, you know, made some very good points there. And of course, if we look at the, the dollar, it's now on a trade weighted basis, you know, back to levels or down to levels that we last saw um, in June last year. And so I think that is certainly one of the, the key factors that is helping, I think, to, to support gold, gold prices. And of course, you know, part of that relates to the interplay with other key um, central banks. We've obviously had comments. Um, Quite obviously, um, very recently from the ECB, um, looking to uh, lift rates um, and maintain rates higher for longer, and that sort of sits against market expectations at the least that the, the Fed will um, start to adopt a much more dovish stance. Hence, why we've seen the dollar come under pressure and therefore supporting gold. Oh, absolutely. And what a strong run up! Uh, uh, apart from central bank buying, as you said, the currency clearly has a bigger role to play here. Michael, hi. And even as everything has it working for silver prices, and last year was a good one, but the start for this year hasn't been so great. What do you put that to? Well, look at I mean, last year's average price was around twenty-one dollars and ninety cents, and right now we're averaging twenty-three dollars for the first, you know, three or four weeks of of January. So we're quite optimistic about the silver price in 2023, and we think the fundamentals are strong, which will lead to a higher price throughout the year. Michael, a major, major buying clearly seems to have come in from India, where we've imported record quantity in 2022. Do you see that uh, pattern repeat itself in this year? It very well could. Look, at, <laughs> we're actually coming to India this year, the Silver Institute. We're doing a, a conference in your great country in late April, and uh, we'll have more information after then. But the conference will include fabricators, jewelers, end users, miners, and so forth. And I think it's a perfect time to come to India. It's the inaugural India Silver Conference in Jaipur in late April. And quite frankly, we think that uh, uh, there'll be some good news coming out of that conference. Thank you. All right. Philip, are you joining uh, Michael for this conference in India in April? Um, I will be in New York with Mike just before that. Uh -huh. We've got you know a fantastic team based in Mumbai, as you know. So Mellow's focus will be very, very well represented at the conference. All right. We look forward to all of that. So, uh, you know, talking back to gold yet again, Philip, what's your sense? Because it really is a divided street on where the gold prices could be headed. I mean, as all from Saxo Bank was telling us that they expect the gold prices to continue to run and perhaps make all time highs as well. And that is what at least 70 percent of banks and brokerages believe. What's your own sense? Well, I think from our point of view, we, you know, the, the key issue is that market expectations that I mentioned earlier, is that the Fed will become uh, take a dovish stance much sooner rather than later. Whereas if you look at the Fed dot plot, it's saying that the Fed will um, maintain rates higher or for longer um, and may not start cutting either, either their weight until very late, 23 or perhaps only do so in, in 24. So you do have quite a dichotomy between what the Fed is uh, saying and what markets expect. And so from our point of view, we think that the Fed will um, maintain that sort of um, that, that strict policy going forward. Um, and so as we go into uh, the back end of 2023, you're going to have a scenario of inflation falling very clearly and quite significantly. The Fed's maintaining rates um, and therefore that suggests that um, real rates will, will increasingly rise. Um, we think this will gradually be supportive for the dollar. And so those two will act as, I think, considerable headwinds. We could therefore see liquidations by investors in the back end of 23. And so from our point of view, as, we, as it stands, we think that prices will weaken during the second half, perhaps falling to around the, the $1,600 level. Now, I know that's not a consensus view, but that's where we probably think that the prices will head. 
Oh, we do get the possibility of that, Philip. It was September that we were trading around 1600. We're trading at 1900 right now. So, well, yes, getting used to that volatility. But also talk to us about the physical buying. And Indian markets, even as this is a wedding season, have seen lesser buying with the kind of run-up that we've seen in prices. China, in the meanwhile, has been buying a lot of gold. How are you looking at the buying patterns around the globe? Well, I think if we, if we focus on India, as you said, you know, the fact that the price has hit record buys in rupee terms very recently, um, and against the backdrop, as you said, of, of the all-important wedding season, I think you know the, the both consumers and fabricators are still um, wrestling with that, still coming to terms with that. So the market has certainly backed off. And of course, you throw into the mix that we've got the budget, you know, just a you know a couple of well, almost like a week away, really. Um, and there are rumours circulating: um, will the government reduce the, the duty on, on gold? And of course, that. Uncertainty, therefore, um, encourages the market just to pause um, and perhaps to run with slightly lower stocks. So I think we certainly have to contend with a, a weaker Indian market as it currently stands. Hmm. Silver, Michael, uh, we've seen uh, uh, strong demand. We've seen investment demand come in as well. The markets also are looking or anticipating a huge amount of industrial demand going forward as well. How are you looking at all of these brackets? Where do you see a major growth coming from? So, look, Manisha, thank you. Uh, we think that the whole green energy transformation is going to help pave the way for silver going forward and not just in 2023. Look, last year we had a record year for industrial demand in terms of silver, and we think it's going to be even stronger this year. Quite frankly, when you look at the solar power installations throughout uh, the world, as well as the uh, uh, electric vehicle increase um, um, in sales and usage throughout the world, not to mention the charging stations, we think it's a win-win. And more importantly, uh, as these economies start to pick up steam, um, in China, for example, we're going to see uh, hopefully stronger output from China on the industrial side, which will be a win-win for silver as well. Mm. Uh, Michael, are there any numbers that you can share with us on what's your sense on the availability, demand growth that we are working with for this year? Yeah, so, you know, when you look at industrial silver, we looked at about 536 million ounces of silver last year, and we think it's going to run up to about 550. So that's a significant increase. Um, we think there will be increases in uh, in other factors. Investment demand, of course, uh, is one of the key players, and we're keeping a close eye on that. Had a very, very strong last year, of course. And we're looking to India as well. And we put out, out a report yesterday called Trends in Indian Silver Investment, a very comprehensive report that looks at the four key aspects of investment demand in India. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, it's getting a lot of attention. And I encourage your viewers to come to our website at silverinstitute.org and uh, download a free copy of that report. Mm. Just to get a sneak peek into the report, uh, Michael, we do understand that silver buying now is becoming easier in India. It's about physical buying, futures, ETFs, and digital uh, silver buying as well. What trend do you see picking up? Well, we look at we we think that the physical buying is going to continue. And if you look at the years of 2010 through 2022, you're looking at over 730 million ounces of silver were purchased by Indian investors. And when you extrapolate that into one year's mine production, last year that represents about 90 percent of global mine production. So we're excited about what's happening in India. We're also excited about these new green shoot uh, opportunities to the Indian investor, including ETPs and digital silver. I mean, ETPs came on the market in what, uh, September of 2021? And now you're looking at it about 8 million ounces of silver in those products throughout the country. So that's rather encouraging. It sure is. But, uh, you know, Philip, this question is to you. And it's not always that we see demand and price movement go hand in hand. I mean, the physical buying clearly is not supportive of where the gold prices are going, but we have seen gold prices totally run up. So what's your sense on what is the kind of demand that we could see for gold? And uh, is it going to be really in relation to the prices? Because when gold prices go down is when the demand goes up. That's absolutely correct. You have it on the head there. And the fact that you know we do think that prices will, as I mentioned earlier, you know, weaken as we move through you know, the second half of this year, we think that will present buying opportunities. And so we are 
from a global standpoint, you know, fairly optimistic for tributary demand. Um, in terms of the coin and, and bar space, you know, it's, it's had a really an exceptional you know, two or three years in a number of key jurisdictions. And I think early signs are that that will, will continue. Um, you know, we could see perhaps a little bit more selling back in some locations. Um, but and as we've started this year, you know, um, lead times are still fairly generous for product delivery to the dealers. Premiums are still elevated, be it like Germany um, or the US. So I think there are there's enough signs there, I think, to be encouraging from us, from a focus, from a supply demand standpoint. Mm. Philip, what would you advise your investors if they had to put money uh, between gold or silver? Oh, good question. <laughs> well, well, thankfully, we're not FCA approved, so we can't give advice. I think there will be opportunities on, on, on both counts. You know, what, what Michael was saying in terms of, you know, where industrial demand is heading, um, you know, that will be supportive of prices. The fact we've had the end to um, zero COVID uh, policy in, in China, again, is my, my uh, touch on as well, optimism around China. Um, and as your last speaker was saying about the, you know, where base metal prices are heading as well. So I think there is some, some optimism in that regard. But as, as, as I said, you know, you said that against our, our view that um, as market expectations adjust what the Fed will do in our view, then you have that, that weaker tone in the, in the back end. So there'll be some buying opportunities. But again, you sort of set that against reducing the prices will, as I said, ease back as we move through 23. All right. And we will watch out for that. But with that, that's all the time that we have on the show. Michael, Philip, what an amazing conversation with both of you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. That's all that we have in this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching. Get an exclusive look.